Hey everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of this book called Playing Solo Jazz Piano, and this is the third installment uh, of my Ballads Dials series. And today I want to talk about a stride ballad. This is kind of a big category. I'm going to tell you a lot about a lot of different kind of nuances, a lot of different flavors you can give a stride ballad. But let me start out by playing a little bit in a stride ballad style. I'm going to play the Duke Ellington piece, I Got It Bad, and That Ain't Good. Um, so I'll give you a few different little flavors of a stride ballad in here. So. ballad style and I kind of associate this with the concept of a walking ballad if you played um, in a jazz trio or a larger group you might have heard of a walking ballad which is basically a ballad that you play with walking bass and it's a swung ballad at a slow tempo and you basically do most of the same things that you would do if you were playing a medium tempo tune you're just doing them slower um, and the biggest commonality is that the stride ballad is generally swung I tried to play stride ballads straight and it always feels weird to me. I'm not saying it's impossible, um, but if I'm thinking it just doesn't quite feel right. I really want to swing those A's. I want to get into those that feeling of triplets. Okay. Um, now, one thing that does have to be a little bit different from you know, your medium tempo stride as you slow uh, this process down is that you do want more harmony, right? As we get slower, we need our harmony to be richer and we need to hear more uh, notes in every chord and we need to hear more frequent chords. So, you know, if I were playing this to medium tempo, I might just play a single note the whole time in my right hand. I'll do that one more time since now you know what to watch for. Right? Whereas if I'm playing this slow, you'll notice that my right hand is helping the left hand out quite a lot. And it could be, you know, I'm kind of essentially playing these shared hand voicings. So one way that you could think of it is like you're doing this, but then you're adding a chord in between. Sometimes, instead of doing that, I'll kind of drape chords from the melody. separate, but I'm still getting a lot of nice harmonic information from the right hand. Right. The right hand's still contributing. It's making it thicker, 
which is what we want in a balanced diet. We need more rich, thick carbs. Um, okay, the next big issue is pedal. And you heard me, I did this intentionally. Uh, you might have noticed, you might not have. I pedaled a couple of different ways. And you can definitely give different flavors to stride dollars depending on your pedaling. And then we're gonna talk in a second about tempo as well. So um, if you wanna make a more romantic, classy, maybe, kind of stride dollars, um, then you're probably gonna wanna pedal every single beat. So here's an example of that. This gives it kind of a cheekier, more playful, um, maybe a more down home dancey feeling, even though it's a ballad. just one note based on the bass. Um, so that's definitely possible, and even the greats are doing it. Um, if you've watched my other videos about stride, you know that there are a few other options for pedal. It can be that you're pedaling the strong beats to the weak beats. So pedal is one way that you could really distinguish between two types of stride dials. It feels very different to play this highly pedaled version than to play. And I'm changing my tone a little bit too. I'm playing more harshly when I don't pedal to give it that extra edge, give it that extra attitude. Um, and even if you're pedaling, you can put in some windows of no pedal. of tempo. So I'm kind of doing this at a medium ballad tempo. If I had to guess, I'm probably around 60 or 65 on the metronome. But you can really slow down these stride ballads and give kind of a barrel house bar room, you know, feel. and the triplet subdivision. So you can hear that I'm adding in more and more accents. And I'll often, you know, accentuate and uh, ornament my stride to make it more full than it would be and more busy and active than it would be. So instead of, you know, at a mid-tempo, you know, doing this, I might play.
both sides, you see that I'm adding in um, little approaches to the bass notes, sometimes an octave. And I'm also adding in what I call little skip beats that anticipate the chord. So Too. the right hand can get busier. There's just so much rhythmic space there. You know, the first thing that you want to do is think real 1280. So think really digging into all those triplet subdivisions. And whereas those things are kind of subtle, maybe at a medium tempo, here you can really lose all subtlety. Blue scale, you know, depending on the tune, um, but for most tunes, blue scale is going to be really appropriate at this tempo. You know, if you want to have that kind of down and dirty um, feel. And the last thing is, you know, accents. You hear that right hand is just making these like big obnoxious accents now. Of course, that's not for everybody, but in this style, it makes a lot of sense. We need to keep some rhythmic interest. We need to keep some rhythmic generation. And so if you're playing too smoothly, if you're playing it's just, it's not gonna have that same amount of attitude. So it's a question of how much attitude you want to have. And at that tempo, I feel like you want as much attitude as possible. I'd say bring it on. Let me tell you about a couple of, you know, concepts that maybe are slightly different than this uh, stride ballad, but I think are related and, you know, I think you could benefit from thinking of them in the same category. The first is comping with uh, Freddie Green style comping. And Freddie Green style comping means that you're repeating four quarter notes to the bar, um, which stride also is four quarter notes to the bar, but when you're doing Freddie Green, you're basically playing the same thing four times, right? Freddie Green, um, many of you probably know, is the guitarist in Count Basie's band, and he was known for just strumming. Um, and he's the guy who somebody said about him that you'd never hear him, but you'd always feel him. Um, and this is an accompaniment I like to do sometimes after maybe I've played the head of, at that nice, real slow barrel house tempo. Um, now watch my left hand. So I'm not striding anymore. Now I'm just repeating chords. What's in the chords? It's the root, the third, and the seventh. Some version of that. Out 
different quarter notes. You could leave out the middle quarter, the second quarter note. Can I do that? accenting different things with the pedal. You know, it would also be common to do one, two, three, and. So I love doing that. I love doing that Freddie Green quarter notes. You could try putting in different accents with the pedal. You know, accent two and four, or just beat four. these different layers of rhythm. That's what it's all about, is creating some layers of rhythm. Um, by the way, uh, all that is in this book. Um, I give a few examples, particularly of Gene Harris using that in the book. And he is, man, if you're looking for a down-home stride ballad, Gene Harris is your man. He is just kicking some butt with that stuff. So there are um, some nice examples to look at in the book, of course. Um, if you're going to buy that book, get it from jeremysiskin.com. That way I keep more of the money and don't give it all to Jeff Bezos and Amazon. Um, but another thing that belongs in this category is Peace Peace, um, right? Which is this Bill Evans piece, um, famously, which is just this really a one chord or two chord, depending on how you look at it, um, vamp. And what's important about this is, you know, whereas regular stride piano is bass chord, bass chord, this is bass chord, chord, bass, bass, chord, chord. Um, and actually, when I, I took a lesson with this guy, Kay Akagi, who's the last, uh, who was the very final pianist to play with Miles Davis. Um, he played more keyboard than piano with Miles, but great pianist. And he said, this is where you should get started playing a solo piano ballad. Um, so that's definitely worth something. Um, you don't find a ton of this in the recorded rep repertoire, but one of my favorite, favorite ballad performances is Hank Jones playing The Very Thought of You. And he does exactly this. He goes. Something like this. left hand and by the way notice now the left now the eighth notes are even this works better with an even eighth note approach so I could certainly apply that if I wanted to I got it bad experimenting with other stride patterns, right? Um, you know, it can be nice to just play bass, chord, chord, chord. And again, this works better with a straight eight. Sometimes 
instrument is nice to do what I call reverse stride, which is chord bass, chord bass. So the chords are coming on the strong beats, the bass notes are coming on the weak beats. Um, so, you know, maybe in the bridge of I Got a Bad. So you could throw that sort of a thing in too. So if I'm playing, I got it bad. See how nice that is? It just completely changes the feel of everything. In the left hand. So that's your stride ballad. Um, usually swung eighth rather than straight. Um, usually thicker chords compared to your medium tempo stride. Um, and in your right hand you could kind of fill it in from the beginning with kind of shared hand voicings or you could um, harmonize each melody note. You want to think about different pedal options. You can hit a really different feel based on the pedal options. You can play kind of a mid-tempo ballad or get to that really slow tempo. And that slow tempo, it tends to go kind of into a 12-8 bar room kind of a, you know, thing. I don't know how to describe it exactly. It's like almost a boogie-woogie-ish feel. Um, and then add some triplets. Uh, think about using a Freddie Green strum on maybe the bridge or on a solo section. And then you could experiment with other stride patterns, such as that piece-piece pattern, reverse stride bass chord, 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 anything like that. If you made it this far, our tropical fruit today is coconut. Uh, put that in the chat. Um, I really appreciate you guys supporting me and the channel by buying the book from jeremysiskin.com. And uh, the fourth installment will be out uh, sometime this weekend, uh, talking about variations of the repeated quarter note ballad. And then we'll have all four of the stride styles that I like to talk about. So thanks for watching everybody. Like and subscribe and comment. I'll see y'all later.